Rico hoped his friends would stop by and explain what was going on, so every day he repeated the same routine, unable to get more than half a mile before it got too risky. Then he started getting strange packages in the mail he didn't remember ordering. They were from a Joe. There'd be a knock in the morning, and he'd get to the door and packages would be sitting there, the first seeming like moving boxes, not exactly new items, like he was getting all of Joe's stuff from him passing away. The items smelled familiar, but he couldn't quite place them. It was a cowboy hat that fit his head perfectly, along with pre-programmed radios to the local repeaters and simplex bands. He looked at the radio for clues, but all it had was, all it had was a few digits, a number, and a few more digits. If he mashed enough buttons, there'd be six letters or so, but it wasn't very specific at all. Abbreviations or acronyms, Rico couldn't tell. Rico figured he was getting Joe's belongings. Maybe they were willed to him or something. The familiar smell of the clothing and gear were relaxing to Rico, and he accepted the items and was thankful. Out of respect for this Joe, Rico would do his best to honor him despite lack of mem memory. The weeks would go by and Rico kept working on his garden, trying to get ready for spring, but it was no use. Everything was dead and there was no efficient way for him to water the garden. The garden attempt. He worked to clean up his current well, but it only serviced a few appliances in his house. The well was a pipe in a hole drilled straight through the ground with no access point, and he didn't dare touch it for fear he'd mess up his current few systems it worked for. It was hooked up to some complicated systems that were self-sustaining, and it had always been way over Rico's head. Then one morning, after a week or two of being home, Rico woke up to a knock at the door again. He would get up to see who it was, and packages started arriving again from a Joe. This set of items shipped to him was a special Millsurp shovel and legit Pioneer's pickaxe. Rico opened another box and there was a new pair of worker gloves. His had been caked with years of use. These new gloves would keep his hands warm in the morning and cool during the day and well protected. He filled up a glass mason jar with water and found some tea bags in the back of the shelf in his kitchen. The sink, tub, and toilet pulled from an underground stream that had been set up so long ago. With his new tools, he walked outside with his glass jar and set it in the sun, with some paper and a rock on top so nothing could crawl in the jar and die without his permission. Rico nodded to the jar and began to walk towards the crusty, dead, failed gardening experience of past years for another attempt. He also knew he needed to get that well figured out. There were weird patches of sparse, less dead stuff around his land, but it was hard to pinpoint. He wished he could get up high and try to figure it out, then remembered this Joe guy had ordered him a weird electronic backpack he was supposed to take a look at. Rico went back inside to look for it. It stuck out in his memory due to being a weird-shaped backpack. Rico found the pack and dug through it, only to realize it was mostly electronics and wires inside with a little drone attached integrally to the back. They tried to take the drone off the pack, but it was attached along with the battery charger and some other things Rico didn't recognize. The note attached identified it as a tiny drone, made by some local drone maker that Joe had run into before, apparently. Rico shrugged, walked outside, and turned the drone on by pressing a button on the backpack. To his surprise, it was nearly fully charged. The cell phone buzzed. In Rico's pocket, and the drone sent him a message. Ready to go. He pushed the button, and a black and yellow drone zipped up, and a map appeared on Rico's phone. The colors seemed familiar to Rico, but maybe it was just because it looked like a bee. The house was scanned and appeared as a square with the house icon. A black triangle representing Rico appeared on the screen with the phone as an icon overlaying on top of him. The drone was represented as a little bee on the screen. The prior garden attempts got scanned as well, and each patch of faded green. More squares overlaid the screen here and there of different objects of importance as the drone started zigzagging across the homestead, scanning everything and uploading the data to the phone. A yellow and black blur zipped back and forth, mapping the area. Rico felt like he should be surprised, but was too enthralled with the influx of incoming data. He looked around and started heading towards the first highlighted square that said, 
water possible. With a shovel in one hand and a phone in the other, he stepped around boxes of scorched dirt, burned by both sun and wind. The little buzzing drone finished its scouting of the immediate area and flew back to Rico as he walked towards the first spot identified on his screen. The drone grappled onto Rico's backpack and attached itself with some magnets. The backpack produced where there was an icon showing a battery depleting on his phone and a B logo. A battery with a plus icon appeared and the bar began filling back up. At that point it dawned on Rico that his backpack sort of looked like a little beehive. Someone was terribly clever, Frederico mused to himself, admiring the attention to detail of the drone maker. With shovel and pickaxe in hand, Rico walked a ways towards where the grass wasn't quite as dead. Rico wasn't sure if the sun was playing a trick with the light, but he was sure this grass wasn't quite dead. He squished the blades of grass and they didn't disintegrate like everything else around him. It wasn't hot yet, but it was going to get hot. Rico took the neck wrap he had in his pocket and put it over his head to cover him. It was black and yellow with a snake telling people not to tread. With his trusty new old pickaxe, he started smashing the pokey part of his mattock at the crusty ground. With many smacks and pokes and digs and claws later, the ground became less like a crust and more like a swamp. Rico got the shovel out of the ground where he had stomped and stabbed it in with much resistance. It took equal effort to pull the shovel out as if the ground didn't want to give it up. After an hour or two of picking and shoveling, Rico got down to a little puddle of water he didn't know what to do with. It was so hot. Rico checked his map and saw some plywood identified, so he went and grabbed it. Dragging the plywood back to his makeshift hole wasn't a big deal, and in a short amount of time the hole was covered. A dirty piece of plywood now lay over the hole he'd made so nobody could crawl in it and die without his permission. He thought for a second and decided to shovel a light amount of dirt on top so it wouldn't dry out, then shoved the shovel in the ground again next to it as a marker. Rico chuckled to himself, imagining coming back to 500 shovels in the ground to make sure he never found the hole again. After maybe 20, to 20 minutes or so walk back to his house, he saw his tea was ready and got some oven gloves to bring it back to the house right as it was getting too hot out. The house didn't have AC, but a bunch of fans kicked on to start circulating the air. It was too dry to need AC. The airflow was plenty. Rico sat down with his tea, drank about half the jar, and started to doze off. He dreamed of different times, not necessarily better or worse, of a guy named Joe that used to get on buses with his friends and drive to rallies to cover all the stupidity going on, all of the death threats and brotherhood, getting out of situations nobody would have considered possible so many times where they could have easily got killed. Chapter 4. Who's at the door? Rico woke up at the start. It was evening and cooling down, with still a few more hours of light. He felt rested and his head less sore. A fly landed on his arm and he tried to swat at it. He was too fast, as they always were. A second attempt at swinging at where it would theoretically be sailed right over it. He wiggled his arm and the fly didn't move. Puzzled, Rico was wondering if he was hallucinating the fly as it decided to bite him with a chomp. Ow! Rico flailed around trying to kill some bitch, but he couldn't. As he swung around and his arm hurt, he activated the drone on accident. It sprung to life and started chasing the fly around the room, trying to hit it with its rotors. Rico ran to the bathroom as his arm swelled up immediately. Some time of biting fly, Rico cursed under his breath as he tried to run water over the fresh wound. The house didn't pull a ton of water. It was enough for a very brief rinse of a shower or to pour a gallon here or there to wash dishes or get a drink. Not enough to do much else. Rico stopped running the water. It wasn't helping. He's only wasting the precious resource. A thought popped into his mind. Baking soda. He ran around looking for baking soda, though he didn't know why. His arm, burning like acid, was on it, distracting his thoughts. Rico tossed every cupboard looking for soda and found none. Desperately, he looked in the fridge and nothing and in the freezer. 
There's a package in there with an arm and a hammer that was supposed to be keeping the freezer fresh. It would have to do. 